and the highest stands up and shake hand with the young Enoch from Earth. I know, ladies and gentlemen, the names of these extraterrestrials. Well, I know them from Enoch. And some of these guys wanted to have sex with us, and they did it. In their time, the spirit of time was completely different. They knew nothing about flying machines. In the real book of Enoch, it sounds like this. Enoch. You probably never heard from Enoch. Enoch is, in the Bible, just mentioned with two phrases. It says Enoch was the seventh patriarch before the great flood, and Enoch was the first human who disappeared in the fiery chariot from the earth. That's all what you read in the Bible. So how do we know something about Enoch? Some 160 years ago, a British man came to Ethiopia and he went into a convent. He stood there for 30 years in a convent. He learned the language per perfectly, the local language. And in the old library, he found a book, the book of Enoch. The book of Enoch was written down in the first person. I version, I did, an eyewitness story. He knew the name of Enoch from the Bible. He knew Enoch was the one who disappeared as first one in the fiery chariot, and now a book of Enoch. So he translated finally the book of Enoch from this Ethiopian language into English. And in the year 1900, 1900, a German professor translated finally Enoch from the English language into German language. Now, if you uh, want to look for a book of Enoch, you cannot just go to the library and say, I want the book of Enoch. At least in German language, the book of Enoch is part of thick volumes of scientific literature. The apocryphic texts of the Old Testament. In volume two, you find 126 pages of the book of Enoch. Why is Enoch so fascinating? He begins the story, he says, I was 12 years old. The community, my village, we all wanted to sleep. And then we hear the noise in the sky and something was coming down from the sky. Then two beings in glittering clothes came near to us. We were all afraid and we all fell to the ground, even Enoch. And of a sudden, somebody took him up and put him on his legs and said to him, don't be afraid, human, don't be afraid. We won't harm you. Now here we have the first questions, why should extraterrestrials speak the language of Enoch? Some thousands of years, a group of extraterrestrials surrounded the planet. Some groups of them came to Earth. They behaved themselves as today's ethnologists would do. They studied some of the humans. Today's ethnologists, or ethnologists hundred years in the past, they went to the upper Amazon River, or they went to the upper Nile, and there were complete different cultures up there, the natives. None of the cultures speak German or English or Spanish or French. It was never a problem for the ethnologists to learn the language of the nature in a short time. Language was never a problem. So when I suggest extraterrestrials, they behave themselves like ethnologists. It was no problem for them to observe a group and to learn the language. So for me, it's normal that the extraterrestrials uses the language of Enoch and says, don't be afraid, human, we won't harm you. Then they ask him, the 12 year old boy, if you wish, you can come with us, we will teach you. Enoch has courage, he said, yes, yes. They took these two strange, they took Enoch with them. One of them says, human, you stink terribly. So Enoch had to put away all his clothes until he was completely naked. And then they put him into the water. There must have been a, a river there or a creek. And when he comes out of the water, one of the two gives him a cream and orders him to put this cream all over his body, including his face and his hairs. Enoch does so, and then he smells on his skin. And he say, well, I smelled like ambrosia and different perfumes, which we have no translation of it. He's still naked, the boy. One of them gives them a, a, a cloth of something glittering like they have. They teach him how to put the trousers on. And Enoch looks down on his own body and says, now look, I look like one of them. Then they go up there. Of course, Enoch has no word of spaceship. He sees up on the earth something like gigantic crystals. Doors open and close automatically. He understands nothing. He comes into different rooms. Finally, he comes to a round central room and there, there is a throne and on the throne there is the highest. And the highest stands up and shake hand with the young Enoch from Earth. What I just told you, ladies and gentlemen, 
is fact in the book of Enoch, but not the way I told it to you. Why not? Enoch was translated for the first time roughly 150 years ago. The professors at that time who made these translations were brilliant personalities. Everyone was not a liar. It was not the question of, of hiding something. But in their time, the spirit of time was completely different. They knew nothing about flying machines, not to speak about spacecraft, space vehicles, space... They all believed in honesty. It must have to do something with God. So the translation of Enoch was made in a religious, psychological way. What I just explained to you before in my words, in the real book of Enoch, it sounds like this. Two angels came down from heaven. They uh, put Enoch into the water. They baptized him before the great flood, forget it. They say, you stink. In reality, they give him a cream. He was simply disinfected. That was all. Then he, re he received something which is a similar stra a garment as these extraterrestrials have. That's why he looks as him. I, I look like, like them. Of course, in the religion tradition, in the, the old tradition, they believe that now he went up to heaven. In reality, he was just in a smaller space craft. We would call it space shuttle up to the mother spaceship. Then he comes in the big ra uh, round room where the throne is. The religious translation says, and now Enoch is standing for the, old, for the uh, throne of the almighty God. But even the translators some 150 years ago, they realized that something must be wrong here. If Enoch would have stand before the throne of the almighty God, God would certainly never have stand up and shake hand to the humans. Forget it. It was all misunderstanding. Simply because the time was different when these translations were made. In the meantime, we have the possibility to translate these things from a modern point of view. And it all makes sense. Enoch is, by the way, the only one who gives the names. I know, ladies and gentlemen, the names of these extraterrestrials. Well, I know them from Enoch. Enoch quotes them all. These are the names of their leaders. The name of the first is Jekun. He is the one who seduced the children of men, etc. 36 names. I said, they behave themselves like ethnologists. Now, Enoch realizes that up there, they were of different opinions. And some of the group went to Earth, and on Earth they found beautiful humans, mostly female, male, but not only. And some of these guys wanted to have sex with us. And they did it, they had sex. Now the question comes up, why should extraterrestrials have the same sexual apparatus as we? I came back to this point, why this happened. So Enoch describes exactly what happened. You can read it in the book of Enoch. But when the sons of the heavens saw that the daughters of men were fair, they admired them and desired to mate with them. And they said to each other, we will take them as wives. Altogether, they were 200, which descended upon Mount Hermon in the days of Jared. Jared is the father of Enoch. Jared is the sixth patriarch before the great flood. Now you say, fallen angels or sons of heaven had sex with humans? This must be a wish, imagination. I suggest you just read the Bible. First book of Moses, chapter six, first one. When the humans began to multiply and have daughters, the sons of God saw that they were fair and they took them as their wives. Which sons of God? There were no angels. All this was simply extraterrestrials. If you like this video and you want to see more amazing content, go ahead and check out the next video on our channel.